What's up everyone? Today is Sunday, no Monday, and we are here to learn the OABS method from Andrew Kirby. He just posted it recently. 451 subscribers. Okay, it's a podcast. It's a new page, I guess. Huh. Hmm. Something happened. Okay. <clears throat> We're gonna learn this method. He just posted this video recently. So let's get into it right away. YouTube and I made a million dollars all from So I've got 600,000 subscribers on YouTube and I made a million dollars all from okay. YouTube. And quite a few people, specifically consultants and educational content creators, ask me how I do it. And the way that I did it was using what I call the OABS, the Optimal Audience Building System. Wow. And in this video, my plan is to break down what that system is and really try and condense four years now of creating videos and hundreds of videos into five, 10, 15 minutes, however long it takes. So the premise of this and the reason that you should listen to this is because humans have desires, you have goals, and many of the goals that you want to achieve, the desires you want fulfilled, require other people. For example, if you want money, other people have to give you money. If you want status, if you want respect, if you want your work to be appreciated, if you want to be able to make a good career, making decent money, doing what you love, other people are involved. And in the modern era that we live in, the way that you build relationships with people at scale, the best way is content. So I believe that- Notes, create content, period, cool. That anybody who has desires that need other people to be fulfilled, for example, making money, it's worth creating content because it allows- Making money, it's worth creating content. Content that you like and the people as well. you to develop the relationships with other people that will later give you money at scale that being said let's get into specifically how you can go about the process of creating content in a way that's going to let you build an audience it's going to allow you to attract and retain the attention and the trust of the people that you want to be getting in contact with the optimal audience building system it's comprised of two different parts first one Think about it. Alan is sitting here taking notes, free and like top class notes in content creation from YouTube without paying a single penny. Think about it. Ask yourself the question, who is it that I'm trying to attract? You need to get very, very clear on who it is that you're trying to attract. Otherwise, it's impossible for you to know where to make and it's impossible for you to know what to make. The very first question you have to ask. No to ask is no ads. who is it that you're trying to attract and normally the person you're trying to attract is somebody similar to you somebody that has similar yeah, problems to you somebody that has similar goals to you it's easy to attract the attention of somebody that's similar to you because you know what you, they like you know what they dislike easy to attract people similar to you just like you easy to attract people just like Alan. And you're able to talk to them in the same way that they talk. So you're able to meet their beliefs, meet their thoughts at the same place that they're at. You're able to actually speak with them instead of speaking to somebody that's not them. And they kind of just feel this unresonance, if that's a word. The opposite of resonance. Dissonance. Whereas if you know who you're speaking to, you're able to speak directly to them. And even though at the moment I'm speaking to the camera, I know who I'm speaking to. Wow. So I'm able to speak to you in a way that clicks with you. You understand. Wow, that's so revolutionary. Wow. And, and it kind of feels like we're having a conversation, even though. Fact, I don't want to be too diplomatic when I'm talking. Like, I don't want to like hold myself when I'm talking to an audience, even my friends. I just want to be me. And the topics I want to talk is not like... It's not the topics everybody wants to talk, but some people love hearing what I'm saying, but some people don't. So finding an optimal audience is a good strategy. Cool. Oh, I'm just talking to a camera. So the very first step is to figure out who it is that you want to attract. 
The second step is to figure out where they give their attention. Wow. This can be solved in two different ways. The first way, which is the first half of the optimal audience building system, is to ask yourself the question, what platforms does your target avatar, does your niche, do the people that you want to be attracting put their attention on? YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn. Where is it that the people you're trying to attract give their attention? And then obviously, you want to be creating content for that platform. And in the beginning, you just want to pick one platform to go on. Mm. It's difficult to find content market fit in one platform. Facts. What I figured out, <clears throat> my ideal audience is just like me. If they're just like me, they're in TikTok primarily because their attention span is really bad at this time. But right now, I'm not using TikTok because I, I came to a realization like TikTok <sighs> makes you like an idiot makes you feel like an idiot. You're just having a low attention span. So I switched that to LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, I think my ideal audience should be in Twitter and YouTube. LinkedIn, it's a promotional stuff, but Twitter and YouTube, yeah. And right now I have four of them, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn. But I'm like, I can't make all this, all this content in for this platform, it's hard. So I better stick to one, just like Andrew said. Um, let alone a bunch of different platforms, because every different platform is different. So you have to create natively for that specific platform. In my early stages, I literally just focused on YouTube. I didn't have an Instagram. I didn't have a TikTok. I didn't even have a Twitter. I just focused on YouTube. And now my focus is pretty much just on Twitter and YouTube. So now, even though it's four years into the game, I'm still on two different platforms. Gary Vee recommends you go everywhere and you be everywhere, but he has a team of 30 people. So unless you're gonna start out with a team of 30 people, I'd recommend you just pick one platform for you to get good at. Now you know where to make, the next question is what do you make? And this is the secret. This is four years of content creation boiled down into one sentence. If you want to grow an audience, you have to satisfy an unmet desire. And when we Satisfy unmet desire. Whoa, whoa. Hmm. Spider tingles are working. It's just like imagine this: you want to get the hot girls, but nobody got the guts these days to do it. That's why a lot of Facebook. YouTube vloggers do a lot of like prank slash pickup lines because everybody want to do it. Everybody want to be that social, but nobody tries that much. That's a unmet desire. Same financial stuff. Unmet desire. Networking. Unmet desire. Knowing yourself truthfully. Unmet desire. Just like Alex Hermosi said. Dream outcome. I should fulfill the dream outcome of people in order to do that i should have reached that point fact when we break that down unmet desire what that means is low supply but high demand low supply unmet high demand desire if you're able to create content that people would love to see but that nobody else is making again high demand low supply that's how you really quickly grow an audience. If you look at everybody who's grown quickly, who's grown an audience quickly, they've satisfied an unmet desire. That's at the secret of everything. It's nothing to do with tactics. It's nothing to do with strategies. It's nothing to do with retention hacks or click-through rate or anything or thumbnail or title. Hmm. All of those things are little pieces of the puzzle. But at the very core, you have to realize that you're creating content and there is a niche, there's a group of people that you're trying to attract. Wow, I love doing this stuff. Fuck it. I love doing this. Hmm. Yeah. Figure out who is creating for them, what desires are already being satisfied within that market, and what can you create that they would love to see but that nobody else is making. This is the reason why you see somebody blow up and then a bunch of other people try and copy that person mm. and they don't grow anywhere near as quickly because the desire that led to the person blowing up has now been satisfied. It means that there's no more desire in the market for that specific mm. kind of content. 
a much better approach is to say, given my understanding of the people that I want to be attracting, I believe that if I create this kind of content, you create some kind of a growth thesis, a hypothesis, then I'll get the attention of this group. So if you look at somebody like Alex Hormozzi, his oh, yeah. growth thesis was something along the lines of, given my understanding of my niche, and given my understanding of my competition, I predict that if I create the most valuable content that there is, and I have nothing to sell you, and I also flex that I've got a $100 million company before, then I predict that I will have what's necessary in order to grow. Given his understanding of his competition, which is his supply, given his understanding of his niche, which is demand, he was able to find an unmet desire that he could satisfy, and that was why he grew so quickly. If you look at somebody like Mr. Beast, his growth thesis was something like, given my understanding of my niche and given my understanding of my competition, I believe that if I make the world's best videos, the world's most entertaining videos... Mm. Give me a second. So, <clears throat> side note. I should make content in all the areas. Like, it's not... You can choose a specific niche, but if you are the guy who is like a techie, at the same time an entrepreneur, at the same time uh, a psyche, at the same time your personality type, you know your personality type. At the same time you know your desires, you can make multiple contents in a different portion of time. Like this, for example, just like Andrew Gribby, if you like productivity you can create a productivity video which is something trending right now next week you came upon a new chat gpt file update so you created a video upon that you attract people from all these different aspects which is cool they're like you you are not only focused on one thing but you're doing stuff from everything okay i should not that down videos that are incredibly extreme because I reinvest every single dollar that I make and I obsess over YouTube more than everyone else, then I'll be able to attract the attention of the people that I want to attract. He came up with some kind of a growth thesis. Given his understanding of the niche and his competition, I predict that if I do this, then I will grow. So whenever you want to create content, you have to come up with some kind of a growth thesis, a hypothesis for the style of content that if you make, will satisfy an unmet desire and will lead to you growing. That's at the core. That's at the very, very heart of growing an audience. But there's a problem with this. This takes time. There's the niche here, you're creating for the platform, and you're trusting that the algorithm will find your content and put it in front of the people that will love your content, assuming that your content's actually good. And this can work, but it can take some time. In order for the algorithm to find your content and find the audience, it takes some time. Rules. It needs to collect data, it needs to run some experiments. So it's unpredictable. The metrics rules. And it takes a long time to get results. So there's a second part of the optimal audience building strategy that allows you to guarantee that you get in front of the people that you're trying to attract. Instead of trusting algorithms, you can now guarantee that you get in front of their attention. And the way that you do this is by asking yourself the question, not what platform is my niche putting their attention on, but who has the attention of my niche? What YouTubers, what, but Sorry. who has the attention? Who has their attention? Uh, does he mean who already has their attention? Attention of my niche. What YouTubers, what podcasters, what communities, what newspapers, what blogs do my niche go on? And now you have to try and reverse engineer a way for you to get in front of them. So if you mm. discover that your niche Wait a second. platform is my niche putting their attention on, but who has the attention of my niche? What YouTubers, what podcasters, what communities, what newspapers, what... That means the Prometheus theory. Like, who is the gods that are, that are already in your niche? Or who are the experts that are already 
in my niche. Blogs, do my niche go on? And now you have to try and reverse engineer a way for you to get in front of them. So if you just... Reverse engineer is a really good word because it made tremendous changes to my life. Hacking some apps, hacking some softwares, hacking some membership. Good. But that your niche watches 10 different YouTubers. Go about the process of reaching out to those YouTubers, adding value to them, networking with them, so that eventually... Mm. The process of reaching out to those... And? Those YouTubers adding value to them, networking with them... Network. So that eventually, you can do some kind of a collaboration. Or okay, eventually... Eventually, there is a collaboration. Internet makes everything easy, but we have low attention span. Or find what communities your niche are highly densely congregated in and just become an active member of the community. Start networking, start adding value, start replying to people's comments, start posting in there, and eventually you'll be able to get the attention of the niche. Because if you go to a community and you make a post, you guarantee that the people that are in your niche will see that post. Just like if I go on a podcast that has a high density of the people I'm trying to attract, I know for a fact that there's a group of people that watch every single podcast, so I'm guaranteed to get the attention of those people. This is called the Dream 100 strategy. And you see people that have grown really quickly doing a combination of these two strategies, creating their own content for the platforms and going on other people's channels leveraging cool in other people's communities to quickly and easily get in front of the people you're trying to attract using the second strategy the dream 100 strategy a few months ago i wanted to start my own mastermind for synthesizers for people that want to make a good career by solving their own problems and sharing the solutions and the way that I filled up this mastermind, it ended up making around $100,000, was I found the community that I believed had the highest density of people that would be interested in my mastermind. I created one Loom video that was 33 minutes long that added value, shared some insights, built some authority within that niche. I put it inside of the community and many people came up to me and asked me to join my mastermind and my mastermind filled up and it made $100,000. One video with this Dream 100 strategy allowed me to fill up the mastermind and make $100,000. And that on the other hand, the content strategy that I talked about first allows you to build up the audience long-term. One of them short-term, one of them is long-term. Both of them put together are incredibly effective and both of them combined to make up the optimal audience building strategy that can allow you to grow an audience quickly. Hope you enjoyed. All right, no other videos. Who is this guy, by the way? Who are you? Okay. Okay, anyways. Time to get to work. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. You can just watch that video right away. I'm just, there's my head in between. Have a good one. Bye.